The Quebec sovereignty movement is a political movement as well as an ideology of values, concepts and ideas that advocate sovereignty for the Canadian province of Quebec. Several diverse political groups coalesced in the late 1960s in the formation of the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua, a provincial political party. Since 1968 the party has appealed for constitutional negotiations on the matter of provincial sovereignty, in addition to holding two provincial referendums on the matter. The first, which occurred in 1980, asked whether Quebecers wished to open constitutional negotiations with the federal government for the intended purpose of establishing a sovereignty association pact between the province of Quebec and the rest of Canada. Approximately 60% of Quebec's voting public rejected the idea put forth by Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua leader Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisc. The matter was dropped by the party for most of the 1980s, especially after the patriation of the Canadian Constitution without the consent of the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua government, and the creation of the Federal Charter of Rights and Freedoms which enshrined the protection of the French language and French-Canadian culture in Canada. In 1995, after two failed attempts by the Mulroney government to secure Quebec's ratification of amendments to the Constitution, the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua held a second referendum, though on this occasion the question was, albeit obliquely asked, whether one wished for the independence of the province of Quebec from the rest of Canada. On this more precise question, the response was again in the negative, though this time by a far closer margin, with only 51% against the proposal. Though the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua has long spearheaded the sovereignty movement, they are not alone. Other minority provincial political parties, such as Option Nationale and Quai Copyright Bec Solidaire, also support sovereignty, but are not always supportive of the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua. The Quebec Liberal Party, Quai Copyright Bec's other primary political party, is opposed to increasing political sovereignty for the province, but has also been historically at odds, on occasion, with various Canadian federal governments. Thus, Quebec politics is effectively divided into two camps, principally opposed over the sovereignty issue. Quebec sovereignty is politically opposed to the competing ideology of Canadian federalism. Most groups within this movement seek to gain independence through peaceful means, using negotiation-based diplomatic intervention, although French groups have advocated and used violent means. The overwhelming number of casualties were murdered at the hands of the FLQ, a terrorist organization which perpetrated a bombing and armed robbery campaign from 1963 to 1970, culminating in the October crisis in the death of senior government minister Pierre Laporte. Since this time all mainstream sovereignist groups have sworn off violence, while extremist nationalist groups, though in the minority, support violent actions in the name of liberating Quebec from Canadian sovereignty. The primary mainstream political vehicle for the movement is the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua, which has governed Quebec on multiple occasions. In 2012 it was elected to a minority government, in which its leader, Pauline Moroy, became the first female premier of Quebec. However, only 18 months later, the PQ was defeated by the Liberal Party of Quebec in the 2014 elections. Terminology, in practice, separatist, and sovereignist are terms used to describe individuals wanting the province of Quebec to separate from Canada to become a country of its own. Supporters of the movement generally prefer the latter term. The term independentist is preferred by some of these supporters. Reasons for sovereignty Justifications for Quebec's sovereignty are historically ethno-nationalistic in tendency, claiming that the unique culture and French-speaking majority are threatened with assimilation by either the rest of Canada or, as in metropolitan France, by Anglophone culture more generally, and that the best way to preserve language, identity and culture is via the creation of an independent political entity. Other distinguishing factors, such as religious differences, are also used to justify either separation or ethno-nationalist social policies advocated by the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua. The historical justification is that Quebec should be independent by virtue of New France having been conquered by the British in 1763 and subsequently relinquished to the British in exchange for Haiti. 
it argues that the people of Quebec are the descendants of a conquered people who were due their national sovereignty. This perspective was popular in the 1950s and 1960s when European countries were giving up their colonies in the name of independence throughout much of Africa, the Middle East and South Asia. Eight of the other Canadian provinces are overwhelmingly English-speaking, while New Brunswick is officially bilingual and about one-third francophone. Another rationale is based on resentment of anti-Quebec sentiment. With regard to the creation of the sovereignist movement, language issues were but a substratum of larger cultural, social and political differences. Many scholars point to historical events as framing the cause for ongoing support for sovereignty in Quebec, while more contemporary politicians may point to the aftermath of more recent developments like the Canada Act of 1982, the Meech Lake Accord or the Charlottetown Accord. Many supporters of Quebec's sovereignty often compare their situation with Catalonia in regards to Spain and Tibet in regards to the People's Republic of China. Overview equals Background equals Tension between the Francophone, Catholic population of Quebec and the largely Anglophone, Protestant population of the rest of Canada has been a central theme of Canadian history, shaping the early territorial and cultural divisions of the country that persist to this day. Supporters of sovereignty for Quebec believe that the current relationship between Quebec and the rest of Canada does not reflect Quebec's best social, political and economic development interests. Moreover, many subscribe to the notion that without appropriately recognizing that the people of Quebec are culturally distinct, Quebec will remain chronically disadvantaged in favor of the English-Canadian majority. There is also the question of whether the French language can survive within the geographic boundaries of Quebec and where French-Canadian society and culture fits into what is an increasingly multicultural country. Separatists and independentists are generally opposed to some aspects of the federal system in Canada and do not believe it can be reformed in a way that could satisfy the needs of Quebec's French-speaking majority. A key component in the argument in favor of overt political independence is that new legislation and a new system of governance could best secure the future development of modern qua copyright bar copyright qua culture. Additionally, there is wide-ranging debate about defense, monetary policy, currency, international trade and relations after independence and whether a renewed federalism would give political recognition to the Quebec nation could satisfy the historic disparities between these cultural nations and create a more cohesive and egalitarian Canada. Several attempts at reforming the federal system in Canada have thus far failed because of, particularly, the conflicting interests between Quebec's representatives and the other provincial government's representatives. There is also a degree of resistance throughout Quebec and the rest of Canada to reopening a constitutional debate, in part because of the nature of these file Louisa Euro not all of which were the result simply of sovereignists and federalists not getting along. To cite one case, in a recent round of constitutional reform, Elijah Harper, an Aboriginal leader from Manitoba, was able to prevent ratification of the agreement in the provincial legislature, arguing that the accord did not address the interests of Canada's Aboriginal population. This was a move to recognize that other provinces represent distinct cultural entities, such as the Aboriginal population in Canada's prairies or the people of Newfoundland. Equals contemporary politics equals, perhaps the most significant basis of support for Quebec's sovereignty movement lies in more recent political events. For practical purposes, many political pundits use the political career and efforts of Rena Copyright La Copyright Vesque as a marker for the beginnings of what is now considered the contemporary movement, although more broadly accepted consensus appears on the contemporary movement finding its origins in a period called the Quiet Revolution. Rena Copyright La Copyright Vesque, architect of the first referendum on sovereignty claimed a willingness to work for change in the Canadian framework after the Federalist victory in the referendum of 1980. This approach was dubbed Le Beau Risque, and it led to many ministers of the La Copyright Vesque's government to resign in protest. The 1982 patriation of the Canadian constitution did not solve the issue in the point of view of the majority of sovereignists. The Constitutional Amendment of 1982 was agreed to by representatives from nine of the ten provinces. Nonetheless, the constitution is integral to the political and legal systems used in Quebec. There are numerous possible reasons the Yes campaign went down to defeat, 
the economy of Quebec suffered measurably following the election of the Sovereignist Party Quoi Copyright Bar Copyright Qua and continued to during the course of the campaign. The Canadian dollar lost much of its value and, during coverage of the dollar's recovery against U.S. currency, there were repeated citations of the referendum and political instability caused by it cited as cause for the fall. Some suggest there were promises of constitutional reform to address outstanding political issues between the province and the federal government, both before and since, without any sign of particularly greater expectation those promises would be filled to any greater or lesser degree. There remains no conclusive evidence that the sovereignty movement derives significant support today because of anything that was promised back in the 1970s. Proponents of the sovereignty movement sometimes suggest that many people in Quebec feel bad for believing the constitutional promises that the federal government and Pierre Trudeau made just before the 1980 Quebec referendum. Those were not delivered on paper or agreed upon in principle by the federal government or the other provincial governments. But, one conclusion that appears to be universal is that one event in particular a Euro dubbed the Night of Long Knives a Euro energized the sovereignist movement during the 1980s. This event involved a backroom deal struck between Trudeau, representing the federal government, and all of the other provinces, save Quebec. It was here that Trudeau was able to gain agreement on the content of the constitutional amendment, while the separatist premier Rena Copyright La Copyright Vesque was left out. And it may well be that a certain number of Quebecers did and may even now feel bad, both about the nature of that deal and how Trudeau went about reaching it. Regardless of Quebec government's refusal to approve the 1982 constitutional amendment because the promised reforms were not implemented, the amendment went into effect. To many in Quebec, the 1982 constitutional amendment without Quebec's approval is still viewed as a historic political wound. The debate still occasionally rages within the province about the best way to heal the rift and the sovereignty movement derives some degree of support from a belief that healing should take the form of separation from Canada. I also criticized the unilateral repatriation, sick of 1982, concluding that even in their moments of greatest mistrust, the Quay copyright bar copyright qua never imagined that the Pact of 1867 could ever be changed without their consent. Hence the impression they had in 1982 of a breach of trust, of a violation of the national bond's integrity. The descendants of Georgia Pamel Shankartia did not expect this from the descendants of John A. Macdonald. Perceived as trickery in Quebec, the repatriation, sick of 1982 has placed a time bomb in the political dynamics of this country. The failure of the Meech Lake Accord a Euro and abortive attempt to redress the above is sways a Euro strengthened the conviction of most sovereignist politicians and led many Federalist ones to place little hope in the prospect of a federal constitutional reform that would satisfy Quebec's purported historical demands. These include a constitutional recognition that Quebecers constitute a distinct society, as well as a larger degree of independence of the province towards federal policy. In Montreal, June 25, I walked along Rue Shibrook to Olympic Stadium, submerged in the immense river of white and blue that seemed unstoppable on its march to sovereignty. Three days earlier, Borussia, former Minister of Federalism, had hurriedly changed his tune, English Canada must understand that. Quebec is, today and forever, a distinct society, free and able to assume its destiny and its development. The contemporary sovereignty movement is thought to have originated from the quiet revolution of the 1960s, although the desire for an independent or autonomous French-Canadian state has periodically arisen throughout Quebec's history, notably during the 1837 Lower Canada Rebellion. Part of Quebec's continued historical desire for sovereignty is caused by Quebec's perception of a singular English-speaking voice and identity that is dominant within the parameters of Canadian identity. For a majority of Quebec politicians, whether sovereignist or not, the problem of Quebec's political status is considered unresolved to this day. Although Quebec independence is a political question, cultural concerns are also at the root of the desire for independence. The central cultural argument of the Sovereignists is that only sovereignty can adequately ensure the survival of the French language in North America, allowing Quebecers to establish their nationality, preserve their cultural identity, and keep their collective memory alive. At the same time, 
a brutal gesture by the Saskatchewan legislature brought the first language crises to my doorstep. The legislature precipitously abrogated the only law guaranteeing linguistic rights to the French population. It was revenge for a recent Supreme Court decision that had confirmed the constraining power of the law requiring all provincial laws to be available in French. To avoid having to translate all their laws, Grant Devine's government moved to repeal the act. The French community reacted with indignation and asked for federal intervention. Equals legal and constitutional issues equals, it has been argued by Jeremy Weber and Robert Andrew Young that, as the office is the core of authority in the province, the secession of Quebec from Confederation would first require the abolition or transformation of the post of Lieutenant Governor of Quebec. Such an amendment to the Constitution of Canada could not be achieved without, according to Section 41 of the Constitution Act, 1982, the approval of the federal parliament and all other provincial legislatures in Canada. Others, such as Jay Whirling, however, have claimed that the legislative process towards Quebec's independence would not require any prior change to the viceregal post. Young also concluded that the lieutenant governor could refuse royal assent to a bill that proposed to put an unclear question on sovereignty to referendum or was based on the results of a referendum that asked such a question. Arguments against sovereignty, in a series of letters throughout the 1990s, star copyright Fain Dien laid out an argument against sovereignty. It has also been argued by prominent Quebecers that sovereignty politics has distracted Quebecers from the real economic problems of Quebec, and that sovereignty by itself cannot solve those problems. In 2005 they published their position statement, Pour un quoi copyright Bec Lucide, which details the problems facing Quebec. Many Federalists opposed the Quebec sovereignty movement for economic and political reasons but many also opposed sovereignty on other grounds. For example, since the 1995 referendum, in regards to the declaration of Jacques Parizeau who blamed the loss on money and the ethnic vote, many Federalists considered the sovereignty movement as an expression of ethnic nationalism. Some arguments against sovereignty claim that the movement is illegitimate because of its Eurocentrism which alienates many among Canada's First Nations, as well as the Inuit, and Ma copyright as peoples and their sympathizers. The sentiment is summed up by a quotation from a Mohawk from Axis and, How can Quebec, with no economic base and no land base, ask to become sovereign? How can Quebec be a nation when they have no constitution? We have had a constitution since before the American Revolution. Here the argument expresses the claim that the Mohawk Nation has a more legitimate claim to distinct nationhood on the basis of traditional lands and a constitution predating confederation and thus should be afforded the right of self-determination. Similarly, the Cree have also asserted for many years that they are a separate people with the right to self-determination recognized under international law. They argue that no annexation of them or their territory to an independent Quebec should take place without their consent, and that if Quebec has the right to leave Canada then the Cree people have the right to choose to keep their territory in Canada. Cree arguments generally do not claim the right to secede from Canada. Rather, the Cree see themselves as a people bound to Canada by treaty, and as citizens of Canada. The Cree have stated that a unilateral declaration of independence by Quebec would be a violation of fundamental principles of human rights, democracy and consent. If secession were to proceed, the Cree argue that they would seek protection through the Canadian court as well as asserting Cree jurisdiction over its people and lands. Professor Peter Russell has said of Aboriginal peoples in Canada, they, are not nations that can be yanked out of Canada against their will by a provincial majority with few exceptions wish to enjoy their right to self-government within Canada, not within a sovereign Quebec. International human rights expert Erica Irinda says the change will leave the most marginalized and excluded of all the world's peoples without a legal, peaceful weapon to press for genuine democracy. This concern is connected to the claim that if Quebec were to be considered its own autonomous nation-state then it need not honour the treaties and agreements that were formed between Aboriginal peoples and the British and French monarchies and is now maintained by the federal Canadian government. Concern for this may stem from perception of neo-colonial or Eurocentric attitudes in the leadership of former premiers, such as Robert Bourassa and self-proclaimed conqueror of the North. Additionally, 
those in favor Canadian federalism denounce Quebec separation as a balkanization of Canada, a country principally created by French Canadians living in present-day Quebec. Sovereignty Association The history of the relations between French and British descendants in Canada is one filled with a lot of rocky moments. After discovering Canada and establishing some outposts and cities, France lost it to Great Britain. After the Seven Years' War ended in 1763, France abandoned claims on Canada and Great Britain gave the West Indies islands of Guadeloupe, Martinique and some others back to France in the Treaty of Paris, at which time France limited its activities to parts of North America south of present-day Canada. From that point on, at different moments in Canada's history, some leaders and groups have risen to claim authority. The use of the word sovereignty and many of the ideas of this movement originated in the 1967 movement Souverainetta Copyright Association of Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisc. This movement ultimately gave birth to the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua in 1968. Sovereignty Association is the combination of two concepts, the achievement of sovereignty for the Quebec state. The creation of a political and economic association between this new independent state and Canada. It was first presented in La Copyright Fisc's political manifesto, Option Quai Copyright Bec. The Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua defines sovereignty as the power for a state to levy all its taxes, vote on all its laws, and sign all its treaties. The type of association between an independent Quebec and the rest of Canada was described as a monetary and customs union as well as joint political institutions to administer the relations between the two countries. The main inspiration for this project was the then emerging European community. In Option Quay Copyright Beck La Copyright Fisk expressly identified the EC as his model for forming a new relationship between sovereign Quebec and the rest of Canada, one that would loosen the political ties while preserving the economic links. The analogy, however, is counterproductive, suggesting La Copyright Fisk did not understand the nature and purpose of the European community nor the relationship between economics and politics that continue to underpin it. Advocates of European integration had, from the outset, seen political union as a desirable and natural consequence of economic integration. The hyphen between the words sovereignty and association was often stressed by La Copyright Fisc and other PQ members, to make it clear that both were inseparable. The reason stated was that if Canada decided to boycott Quebec exports after voting for independence, the new country would have to go through difficult economic times as the barriers to trade between Canada and the United States were then very high. Quebec would have been a nation of seven million people stuck between two impenetrable protectionist countries. In the event of having to compete against Quebec, rather than support it, Canada could easily maintain its well-established links with the United States to prosper in foreign trade. Sovereignty association as originally proposed would have meant that Quebec would become a politically independent state but would maintain a formal association with Canada Euro especially regarding economic affairs. It was part of the 1976 sovereignist platform which swept the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua into power in that year's provincial elections a Euro, and included a promise to hold a referendum on sovereignty association. Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisc developed the idea of sovereignty association to reduce the fear that an independent Quebec would face tough economic times. In fact, this proposal did result in an increase in support for a sovereign Quebec. Polls at the time showed that people were more likely to support independence if Quebec maintained an economic partnership with Canada. This line of politics led the outspoken Ivan D. Champs to proclaim that what Quebecers want is an independent Quebec inside a strong Canada, thereby comparing the sovereignist movement to a spoiled child that has everything it could desire and still wants more. In 1979 the PQ began an aggressive effort to promote sovereignty association by providing details of how the economic relations with the rest of Canada would include free trade between Canada and Quebec, common tariffs against imports, and a common currency. In addition, joint political institutions would be established to administer these economic arrangements. But the sovereignist cause was hurt as many politicians publicly refused to negotiate an economic association with an independent Quebec, contributing to the yes side losing by a vote of 60% to 
This loss laid the groundwork for the 1995 referendum, which stated that Quebec should offer a new economic and political partnership to Canada before declaring independence. An English translation of part of the Sovereignty Bill reads, We, the people of Quebec, declare it our own will to be in full possession of all the powers of a state. To levy all our taxes, to vote on all our laws, to sign all our treaties and to exercise the highest power of all, conceiving, and controlling, by ourselves, our fundamental law. This time, the Soberianists lost in a very close vote, 50.6% to 49.4%, or only 53,498 votes out of more than 4,700,000 votes cast. However, after the vote many within the sovereignist camp were very upset that the vote broke down heavily along language lines. Approximately 90% of English speakers and allophones Quebecers voted against the referendum, while almost 60% of francophones voted yes, and 82% of Quebecers are French-speaking. Quebec Premier Jacques Parizeau, whose government supported sovereignty, attributed the defeat of the resolution to money in the ethnic vote. His opinion caused an outcry among English-speaking Quebecers, since it exposed the ethnocentric perspective of the leader, who focused blame for the defeat on minority communities as if to discount the influence of 40% of francophones who voted no. An inquiry by the Director General of Elections concluded in 2007 that at least $500,000 was spent by the Federalist camp in violation of Quebec's election laws. This law imposes a limit on campaign spending by both option camps. Parisieu's statement was also an admission of failure by the Yes camp in getting the newly arrived Quebecers to adhere to their political option. Accusations of an orchestrated effort of election engineering in several polling stations located in areas with large numbers of non-francophone voters, which resulted in unusually large proportions of rejected ballots, were raised following the 1995 referendum. Afterward, testimony by PQ-appointed polling clerks indicated that they were ordered by PQ-appointed overseers to reject ballots in these polling stations for frivolous reasons that were not covered in the election laws. While opponents of sovereignty were pleased with the defeat of the referendum, most recognized that there were still deep divides within Quebec and problems with the relationship between Quebec and the rest of the country. History equals Precursor ideas and events equals Sovereignism and sovereignty are terms that refer to the modern movement in favor of the political independence of Quebec. However, the roots of Quebec's desire for self-determination can be traced back as far as the Patriots' Rebellion, the Alliance Laurentienne of 1957, the writings of Lionel Groel in the 1920s, the Franca Motion of 1917, and Honor Copyright Mercier's flirtation with this idea. Equals emergence equals, the Quiet Revolution in Quebec brought widespread change in the 1960s. Among other changes, support for Quebec independence began to form and grow in some circles. The first organization dedicated to the independence of Quebec was the Alliance Laurentienne, founded by Raymond Barbeau on January 25, 1957. On September 10, 1960, the Rassemblement Paul and a copyright Pendance Nationale was founded, with Pierre Bourgault quickly becoming its leader. On August 9 of the same year, the Action Socialist Paul and a Copyright Pendants du Quai Copyright Beck was formed by Raoul Roy. The Independence Plus Socialism project of the ASIQ was a source of political ideas for the Front de Libre Copyright Ration du Quai Copyright Beck. On October 31, 1962, the Cometa Copyright de Libre Copyright Ration Nationale and, in November of the same year, the RA Copyright Soda RA Copyright Systems was set up. These two groups were formed by RIN members to organize non-violent but illegal actions, such as vandalism and civil disobedience. The most extremist individuals of these groups left to form the FLQ, which, unlike all the other groups, had made the decision to resort to violence in order to reach its goal of independence for Quebec. Shortly after the November 14, 1962, Quebec general election, RIN member Marcel Chaput founded the short-lived party RA Copyright Publicain du Quai Copyright Beck. In February 1963, 
the Front de Libre copyright ration du Quai copyright Beck was founded by three ressemblement Paul and a copyright pendants national members who had met each other as part of the RA copyright so de RA copyright systems. They were Georges Schoeters, Raymond Villeneuve, and Gabriel Hudorn. In 1964, the RIN became a provincial political party. In 1965, the more conservative Relément National also became a party. The historical context of the time was a period when many former European colonies, such as Cameroon, Congo, Senegal, Algeria, and Jamaica, were becoming independent. Some advocates of Quebec independence saw Quebec's situation in a similar light. Numerous activists were influenced by the writings of Franz Fanon, Albert Memmi, and Karl Marx. In June 1967, French President Charles de Gaulle, who had granted independence to Algeria, shouted Vive la Quai copyright Bec Libre. During a speech from the balcony of Montreal's City Hall during a state visit to Canada. In doing so, he deeply offended the federal government, and English Canadians felt he had demonstrated contempt for the sacrifice of Canadian soldiers who died on the battlefields of France in two world wars. The visit was cut short and de Gaulle left the country. Finally, in October 1967, former Liberal cabinet minister Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisk left that party when it refused to discuss sovereignty at a party convention. La Copyright Fisk formed the movement Souverainetta Copyright Association and set about uniting pro-sovereignty forces. He achieved that goal in October 1968 when the MSA held its only national congress in Quebec City. The RN and MSA agreed to merge to form the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua, and later that month Pierre Bourgault, leader of the RIN, dissolved his party and invited its members to join the PQ. Meanwhile, in 1969 the FLQ stepped up its campaign of violence, which would culminate in what would become known as the October Crisis. The group claimed responsibility for the bombing of the Montreal Stock Exchange, and in 1970 the FLQ kidnapped British Trade Commissioner James Cross and Quebec Labour Minister Pierre Laporte. Laporte was later found murdered. Equals the early years of the party Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua equals, Jacques Parizou joined the party on September 19, 1969, and Jar Copyright Rami Prowal of the Union Nationale joined on November 11 of the same year. In the 1970 provincial election, the PQ won its first seven seats in the National Assembly. Rena Copyright La Copyright Fisk was defeated in Mont Royal by the Liberal Andra Copyright Marchand. Equals the referendum of 1980 equals. In the 1976 election, the PQ won 71 seats a Euro a majority in the National Assembly. With voting turnouts high, 41.4% of the electorate voted for the PQ. Prior to the election, the PQ renounced its intention to implement sovereignty association if it won power. On August 26, 1977, the PQ passed two main laws, first, the Law on the Financing of Political Parties, which prohibits contributions by corporations and unions and set a limit on individual donations, and second, the Charter of the French Language. On May 17 PQ member of the National Assembly Robert Burns resigned telling the press he was convinced that the PQ was going to lose its referendum and fail to be re-elected afterwards. At its seventh national convention from June 1 to 3, 1979, the Sovereignists adopted their strategy for the coming referendum. The PQ then began an aggressive effort to promote sovereignty association by providing details of how the economic relations with the rest of Canada would include free trade between Canada and Quebec, common tariffs against imports and a common currency. In addition, joint political institutions would be established to administer these economic arrangements. Sovereignty Association was proposed to the population of Quebec in the 1980 Quebec referendum. The proposal was rejected by 60% of the Quebec electorate. In September, the PQ created a National Committee of Anglophones and a Liaison Committee with Ethnic Minorities. The PQ was returned to power in the 1981 election with a stronger majority than in 1976, obtaining 49.2% of the vote and winning 80 seats. However, they did not hold a referendum in their second term, and put sovereignty on hold, 
concentrating on their stated goal of good government. Rena Copyright La Copyright Vesk retired in 1985. In the 1985 election under his successor Pierre Marc Johnson, the PQ was defeated by the Liberal Party. Equals the referendum of 1995 equals. The PQ returned to power in the 1994 election under Jacques Parizeau, this time with 44.75% of the popular vote. In the intervening years, the failures of the Meech Lake Accord and Charlottetown Accord had revived support for sovereignty, which had been written off as a dead issue for much of the 1980s. Another consequence of the failure of the Meech Lake Accord was the formation of the Blockway Copyright Bar Copyright Qua, a sovereignist federal political party, under the leadership of the charismatic former Progressive Conservative Federal Cabinet Minister Lucien Bouchard. Several PC and Liberal members of the federal parliament left their parties to form the PQ. For the first time, the PQ supported pro-sovereignist forces running in federal elections. During his lifetime La Copyright Vesque had always opposed such a move. The Union Populaire had nominated candidates in the 1979 and 1980 federal elections, and the Parti Nationalist du Quai Copyright Beck had nominated candidates in the 1984 election, but neither of these parties enjoyed the official support of the PQ. Nor did they enjoy significant public support among Quebecers. In the 1993 federal election, which featured the collapse of Progressive Conservative Party support, the BQ won enough seats in Parliament to become Her Majesty's loyal opposition in the House of Commons. At the Royal Commission on the Future of Quebec in 1995, the Marxist-Leninist Party of Canada made a presentation in which the party leader, Hardy L. Baines, recommended to the committee that Quebec declare itself as an independent republic. Parisi promptly advised the lieutenant governor to call a new referendum. The 1995 referendum question differed from the 1980 question in that the negotiation of an association with Canada was now optional. The open-ended wording of the question resulted in significant confusion, particularly amongst the yes side, as to what exactly they were voting for. This was a primary motivator for the creation of the Clarity Act. The No campaign won, but only by a very small margin a euro 50.6% to 49.4%. As in the previous referendum, the English-speaking minority in Quebec overwhelmingly rejected sovereignty. Support for sovereignty was also weak among allophones and immigrant communities and first-generation descendants. The lowest support for yes side came from Mohawk, Cree and Inuit voters in Quebec. Some First Nations chiefs asserted their right to self-determination with the Cree being particularly vocal in their right to state territories within Canada. More than 96% of the Inuit and Cree voted no in the referendum. However, the Innu, Atacamg, Algonquin and Abenaki nations did partially support Quebec sovereignty. In 1985, 59% of Quebec's Inuit population, 56% of the Atacamg population and 49% of the Montafnais population voted in favour of the Sovereignist Party Quay Copyright Bar Copyright Qua Party. That year, Three out of every four native reservations gave a majority to the party Qua Copyright Bar Copyright Qua Party. By contrast almost 60% of francophones of all origins voted yes. Later inquiries into irregularities determined that abuses had occurred on both sides. Some argued that some no ballots had been rejected without valid reasons, and the October 27 no rally had evaded spending limitations because of out-of-province participation. An inquiry by Le Directeur Gar Copyright Nar Copyright Raldez a Copyright Elections concluded in 2007 that the No Camp had exceeded the campaign spending limits by $500,000. At the end of the 20th century. Equals Quebec General Election, 1998 equals, the Parti Que Copyright Bar Copyright Qua won re election in the 1998 election despite losing the popular vote to Jean Charest and the Quebec Liberals. In the number of seats won by both sides, the election was almost a clone of the previous 1994 election. However, public support for sovereignty remained too low for the PQ to consider holding a second referendum during their second term. Meanwhile, the federal government passed the Clarity Act to govern the wording of any future referendum questions and the conditions under which a vote for sovereignty would be recognized as legitimate. 
federal liberal politician stated that the ambiguous wording of the 1995 referendum question was the primary impetus in the bill's drafting. While opponents of sovereignty were pleased with their referendum victories, most recognize that there are still deep divides within Quebec and problems with the relationship between Quebec and the rest of Canada. Equals Clarity Act, 1999 equals, in 1999, the Parliament of Canada, at the urging of Prime Minister Jean Cric Copyright N, passed the Clarity Act, a law that, amongst other things, set out the conditions under which the Crown in Council would recognize a vote by any province to leave Canada. It required a majority of eligible voters for a vote to trigger secession talks, not merely a plurality of votes. In addition the Act requires a clear question of secession to initiate secession talks. Controversially, the Act gave the House of Commons the power to decide whether a proposed referendum question was considered clear, and allowed it to decide whether a clear majority has expressed itself in any referendum. It is widely considered by sovereignists as an illegitimate piece of legislation, who asserted that Quebec alone had the right to determine its terms of secession. However the Supreme Court of Canada disagreed when the matter was referred to that body, ruling that the Act is constitutional and, just as Canada is divisible, so is Quebec, a ruling that has significant implications for linguistic and ethnic minorities within Quebec, the bulk of whom have traditionally opposed secession. Cre Copyright 10 considered the legislation among his most significant accomplishments. Present. Equals modernization equals, sovereignty association is nowadays more often referred to simply as sovereignty. However, in the 1995 Quebec referendum, in which the sovereignty option was narrowly rejected, the notion of some form of economic association with the rest of Canada was still envisaged and was referred to as sovereignty partnership. It remains a part of the PQ program and is tied to national independence in the minds of most Quebecers. This part of the PQ program has always been controversial, especially since Canadian federal politicians usually refuse the concept. In 2003, the PQ launched the Saison des Ida Copywriters which is a public consultation aiming to gather the opinions of Quebecers on its sovereignty project. The new program and the revised sovereignty project was adopted at the 2005 Congress. In the 2003 election, the PQ lost power to the Liberal Party. However, in early 2004, the Liberal government of Paul Martin had proved to be unpopular, and that, combined with the federal Liberal Party sponsorship scandal, contributed to a resurgence of the PQ. In the 2004 federal elections, the Blockway Copyright Bar Copyright Qua 154 of Quebec 75 seats in the House of Commons, compared to 33 previously. However, in the 2006 federal elections the BQ lost three seats and in the 2008 federal elections lost an additional seat, bringing their total down to 49, but was still the most popular federal party in Quebec up until the 2011 Canadian federal election, when the BQ was devastated by the Federalist NDP with a total of four seats and loss of official party status in the Commons, compared to the NDP's 59, Conservatives 5 and the Liberals 7. Polling data by Angus Reid in June 2009 showed the support for Quebec separation was very weak at the time and separatism unlikely to occur in the near future. Polling data showed that 32% of Quebecers believed that Quebec had enough sovereignty and should remain part of Canada, 28% thought they should separate and 30% say they believe that Quebec does need greater sovereignty but should remain part of Canada. However the poll did reveal that a majority of Quebecers still desired to achieve more autonomy. The number one area of autonomy that those polled had hoped for was with regard to culture at 34%, the next highest areas of autonomy cherished were the economy at 32%, taxation at 26%, and immigration and the environment at 15% each. The 2009 Angus Reid poll also revealed some effects of the Clarity Act in which they asked two questions, one a straightforward question for a separate nation, and the other a more muddled version on separation similar to the one posed in the 1995 referendum. The data on the questions revealed as follows to the first hardline question of do you believe that Quebec should become a country separate from Canada? 34% replied yes, 54% said no and 13% were unsure. 
to the less clear question of do you agree that Quebec should become sovereign after having made a formal offer to Canada for a new economic and political partnership within the scope of the bill respecting the future of Quebec. Support for separation increased to 40 percent yes, the no vote still led with 41 percent, and the unsure increased to 19 percent. The most startling revelation of the poll was in the fact that only 20 percent or one in five polled believed that Quebec would ever separate from Canada. 2011 was considered a watershed year for the sovereignist movement. In the aftermath of the 2011 federal election, La Copyright Gare Marketing and pro-sovereignist newspaper Le Devoir conducted a poll on the question. When asked whether they would vote yes or no in the event of a referendum, 41% of the respondents said they would vote yes. In 2011, the sovereignist movement splintered, with several new parties being formed by disaffected politicians, with some politicians dissatisfied with slow progress towards independence, and others hoping to put the sovereignty question in the back burner. Leadership by PQ leader Pauline Moroy was divisive. Allies and opponents. Equals provincial equals, the separatist movement draws above the left and right spectrum, a sizable minority of more conservative Quebecers supporting the PQ's political agenda because of the sovereignty issue, despite reservations about its social democratic political agenda. Right and left must be interpreted within the provincial context. Liberal Party politics generally coincide with those of other Liberal parties, while PQ politics are more social democratic in orientation. There is no mass conservative movement in Quebec's political culture on the provincial level, due notably to strong government interventionism and Keynesianism shared by all parties since the 1960s, and the province's Catholic heritage. There are, of course, quite a few exceptions. Notable examples include the conservative but nationalist action da copyright mocritique du quai copyright Beck supporting the yes side in the 1995 Quebec referendum. They now support Quebec autonomism, a decentralized view of the Canadian Confederation, and accept the 1995 no verdict. The Progressive Conservative Party of Canada building links with the sovereignist in the 1980s. Sovereignty has very little support among Quebec Anglophones, immigrant communities, and Aboriginal First Nations. About 60% of Francophones voted yes in 1995, and with the exception of weak yes support from Haitian, Arab and Latin American communities, most non-Francophones massively voted no. The opponents of the sovereignty movement view the project as ethnically exclusive, based on its rejection by non-Francophones. This position is sometimes disputed by the PQ which claims its goal is all-embracing and essentially civic in nature. Partitionism There is an undercurrent of feeling amongst ethnic and Anglo voters that sometimes surfaces as a desire to separate from Quebec. This would create a new province of Canada, from the southwestern and southern portions of the province. This feeling is exemplified by the statement a euro if Canada is divisible, then so is Quebec made by Federalists in 1995 or if Quebec can separate from Canada, then we can separate from Quebec. In contemporary times most mainstream political parties in Quebec deny or refuse to comment on the idea that Quebec can be divided up. During the 2007 Quebec election, Federalist and Liberal Party of Quebec leader Jean Charest said that all of these things are hypothetical questions. I do not think that Quebec is divisible. And if ever we were to go there, and end up in that situation, I know the question would be asked. However the Supreme Court of Canada has ruled in favour of the legality in partitioning Quebec, determining that Quebec is in fact divisible according to the same logic, legalities, and democratic tests that render Canada divisible. A panel of Quebec civil servants, at the request of the ruling party Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Choir at the time, wrote a report arguing that international law guarantees the territorial integrity of Quebec should Quebec become an independent state. Cree separation There was a feeling amongst the Cree of northern Quebec, that should the province separate, they would remain part of Canada, and would force the province to return to its pre-1912 boundaries, and re-establish the Ungava district of the Northwest Territories, or a new territory or province created in its place equals rest of Canada equals, 
the other nine provinces of Canada have generally been opposed to Quebec sovereignty. Aside from marginal movements, the only major secessionist movement in English Canada has been the Maritimes anti-Confederation movement immediately after Confederation occurred. In general, Francophones outside Quebec oppose sovereignty or any form of national recognition for Quebec, while non-Francophones, particularly the Anglophone minority in Montreal, also have remained opposed. After polling heavily on the subject, marketing firm President Mark Ledger concluded, a euro only these numbers surprise me, the euro unregistered trademark re so clear across the country, you look at francophones outside Quebec, eat a euro unregistered trademark s the same result, overall, outside the French in Quebec, all the other groups across the country are against this notion a euro the exact question of the November 2006 poll was, currently, there is a political debate on recognizing Quebec as a nation. Do you personally consider that Quebecers form a nation or not? Canadians from every region outside Quebec, non-francophone Quebecers, francophone Canadians outside Quebec all rejected the idea. Equals France equals, in France, although openness and support is found on both sides of the political spectrum, the French political right has traditionally been warmer to sovereignists than the French left. This used to be a paradoxical phenomenon because of the party qua copyright bar copyright qua and most sovereignists being to the political left and supporters of Quebec being as a province tend to be politically on the right. Michel Ricard had been one of the French socialists that broke that so-called rule the most, maintaining a close and warm relationship with Quebec sovereignists. More recently, Tsar copyright Golani Royal, a leader of the French Socialist Party, indicated support for Quebec sovereignty, but it was seemingly a reflexive answer to an out-of-the-blue question from a Quebec journalist in Paris. On a later visit to Quebec City she gave a more nuanced position, mentioning a parliamentary motion recognizing the Quebec copyright bar copyright qua as a nation, but also describing 400 years of oppression, and resistance of francophones in Canada. The French Foreign Office motto concerning Quebec national question is non inga copyright rinse a non indifer copyright rinse, which epitomizes the official position of the French state. In other words, while the Quebec people vote to stay within Canada, France will officially support the Canadian Confederation the way it is. That is why bilateral relations between both governments have been so strong for many years. Former French President Nicolas Sarkozy has stated on the record that he opposes the separation of Quebec from Canada. Sovereignist organizations equals political parties equals party qua copyright bar copyright qua SPQ Libre bloc qua copyright bar copyright qua qua copyright Bec Solidaire option nationale party in de copyright pendantist party Marxist la copyright ninis du qua copyright Bec equals non-partisan organizations equals, movement pour une perm election sur la souveraineté copyright, movement de libre copyright ration nationale du quai copyright bec, conceal de la souveraineté copyright du quai copyright bec, ra copyright so de ra copyright systems du quai copyright bar copyright qua. equals defunct organizations equals, rassemblement pour une copyright pendants nationale, Front de Libre Copyright Ration du Quai Copyright Bec, Parti Nationalist du Quai Copyright Bec, Parti Inde Copyright Pendantist, Union Populaire, Nouvelle Alliance Quai Copyright Bec Canada. Equals Sympathetic Organizations Equals, Confar Copyright Dao Copyright Ration des Syndicates National, Centrale des Syndicates du Quai Copyright Bec, Far Copyright Dao Copyright Ration des Travailleurs et Travailleuses du Quai Copyright Bec, Union des Artistes, Movement National des Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua A des Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Quoises, Saint Jean Baptiste Society. Sovereignist Media, Le Devoir, L'Action Nationale, Arma Copyright RI Quai Copyright Bec, L'Orchinal, Le Couac, Souverainet La Solution, La Gauche, Le Jour, Le Mouton Noir, Le Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua, Quai Copyright Bec Radio, Vigile. Quebec sovereignty movement in fiction, Richard Romer's novel Separation was turned into a TV movie for CTV television in 1977. In the movie, 
the Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua has formed the government of Quebec but Premier Gaston Belial has repeatedly put off its promise to hold a referendum. International politics forces Belial's hand. In the mid-1980s, a second movie, Quebec Canada 1995, depicts a meeting between the President of Quebec and the Prime Minister of Canada to discuss a crisis involving Quebec military occupations of parts of Ontario and New Brunswick. Canada's armed forces are stretched thin with peacekeepers in such varied places as the Falkland Islands. William Wayne Traub's satirical 1979 novel The Underdogs provoked controversy by imagining a future Quebec in which English speakers were an oppressed minority, complete with a violent resistance movement. One planned stage version was cancelled before its premiere. Clive Cussler's 1984 novel Night Probe is set against a fictional attempt at secession in the late 1980s. Rights to newly discovered oil resources in Ungava Bay, discovered as Quebec moves to secede, clash with the ramifications of a rediscovered secret treaty negotiated between the UK and US governments during World War I. David Foster Wallace's novel Infinite Jest includes both real and fictional Quay copyright bar copyright qua separatist movements as integral to the plot. In the story, the United States has merged with Canada and Mexico to form the Organization of North American Nations. Wheelchair-bound Quebec separatists use a video so entertaining it leads to death to accomplish their goals of both Quebec independence and the end of the Onan. In the Southern Victory series of alternate history novels by Harry Turtle Dove, Quebec becomes a separate nation during the Great War, in which the United States defeats Canada, the UK and her allies. Since the United States organized this separation to weaken the rest of Anglophone Canada, the Republic of Quebec operated as a client state of the United States, rather than being truly independent. This is later demonstrated in the series when Dr. Leonard O'Doul is pressured by the United States and Quebec governments to serve as a surgeon in the U.S. Army, despite being a Quebec citizen. O'Doul joins both under this duress, but also as a result of his loyalty to his birth country. In DC Comics, the villain Plastique is initially a Quay copyright bar copyright qua freedom fighter, who resorts to acts of terrorism. In Marvel Comics, the superhero North Star was part of the Front de Libre copyright Ration du Quay copyright Beck in his youth. Margaret Atwood's 1979 novel Life Before Man is set in Toronto in the late 1970s and several characters watch and sometimes comment upon the elections and sovereignist movement in Quebec. The sovereignist movement and its struggles are metaphorically linked to the difficulties the characters in the novel have with separating their own personal relationships. In the role-playing game Trinity there are references made to a separatist Quebec nation who in return for independence helped the then-formed Confederated States of America take control of Canada. In the novel Babylon Babies by the French-born Canadian cyberpunk writer Maurice Dantke, loosely adapted as the film Babylon A.D., Quebec is independent and referred to as the Free Province of Quebec. In the role-playing game Shadowrun, Quebec exists as a sovereign nation alongside the United Canadian American States and the Confederated American States. In the film Die Hard, the terrorist leader demands, as a ruse, the release of imprisoned members of the fictional group Liberty Copyright Duque Copyright Beck. In Peter Watt's science fiction series, starting with Starfish, Quebec has attained sovereignty and is an energetic economic superpower within North America. See also, Alberta separatism, Cascadia, lists of active separatist movements, list of subjects related to the Quebec independence movement, October crisis, politics of Canada, politics of Quebec, Quebec federalist ideology, Quebec nationalism, secessionist movements of Canada. References External links UNESCO article on the evolution of Quebec nationalism, Parti Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua website, Quai Copyright Beck Solidar, Parti Communiste du Quai Copyright Beck, Bloc Quai Copyright Bar Copyright Qua website, St. Jean Baptiste Society website, The Question of Separatism, Quebec and the Struggle over Sovereignty by Jane Jacobs.